training ophthalmologists in complex corneal surgery, my experience, I have no financial interest in this presentation. Traditionally, when you talk about corneal transplantation surgery, at least when I did my surgical uh, training and my fellowship, penetrating keratoplasty was predominantly the most frequently performed corneal surgery. And that was for all kinds of corneal disorders. And it is still predominantly uh, one of the most commonly performed corneal surgery uh, even at this point of time. But in the past two decades, you see that there is a changing trend. And this report from the Eye Bank Association of America in 2019, you can see that there is a shift from penetrating to doing uh, anterior lamellar and predominantly endothelial keratoplasty. And among the endothelial keratoplasty procedure, you'll find uh, DSEC uh, and DMEC being performed. There's an increasing ten trend towards performing DMEC procedures for endothelial disorders. And in Instead of replacing the whole cornea, you try to selectively replace the layer of the cornea that's diseased. And in anterior lamellar keratoplasty, the advantage being that you retain the host endothelium, thereby you can avoid the endothelial rejection. And in endothelial keratoplasty, you selectively replace the endothelium, thereby avoid any surface incisions or sutures, thereby you may retain a smoother surface topography, avoid suture-related complications, and patients have a faster visual recovery and a reduced risk of endothelial rejection. Now, having heard about uh, all these uh, newer procedures, so the question is, is there a need for uh, further surgical training? Because you have so many postgraduate programs and you have fellowship programs across the country in various uh, uh, medical colleges and uh, eye centers. The answer is yes. Uh, we have a lot of corneal surgeons who are in clinical practice who have completed their uh, training prior to the advent of lamellar keratoplasty or maybe when they were training, uh, the lamellar keratoplasty was still not adopted by uh, their uh, you know, professors or their peers who were doing corneal surgery. Uh, even currently, there are few tertiary care centers who provide this hands-on training for newer corneal surgical procedures for their postgraduates or their fellows. Most of the time, you find that corneal surgeons who complete their training are very adept in doing uh, full thickness penetrating keratoplasty or therapeutic. But when it comes to lamellar keratoplasty, there, there is always uh, some lacunae which needs to be filled up. And if they just observe the surgery, but they don't understand the basic principle, when they start with their clinical practice, uh, you know, uh, it makes the learning curve very steep. And if they have complications, they sometimes uh, refrain from uh, incorporating these new surgical techniques into their practice. Now, regarding the surgical training, I... Uh, although I started doing lamellar keratoplasty, especially anterior lamellar keratoplasty back in 98, uh, after coming back from UK and observing Chad Rostron at the St. George's Hospital. And he was doing lamellar keratoplasty, and I, I was so fascinated by it that when I came back, I started doing it uh, with limited instruments and the kind of knowledge we had at that point of time. I started with doing endothelial keratoplasty back in 2003. So when I got hold of the technique, I said, why not share this knowledge that I have? So I started doing this. Uh, courses on lamellar keratoplasty uh, as early as September 2008. Initially, we were doing only uh, the courses for DALC and DSEC. And uh, DMEC, I started performing in 2009. And by 2015, I thought I had a reasonable knowledge where I could, uh, you know, pass it on to people to be able to do the DMEC surgery in a more predictable manner. So we started doing these courses from June 2015. The courses vary from two to six days, depending on which segment the candidate wants to cover. And since 2008, we have trained more than 350 corneal surgeons, both national and international, over 100 international candidates from all across the world. So what is different in the surgical training? There are so many instruction courses or programs uh, at various national and international meetings where they do workshops on lamellar keratoplasty. A lot of people do attend them. Are they not sufficient? I think although, although I am a part of these courses and I do uh, make presentations, what I find is uh, most of these courses, they lack sufficient time for interaction uh, between the delegate and the person presenting. And that leaves behind a lot of unanswered questions. The courses that I have designed, these are very, very basic in nature. And it puts together my own personal experience to simplify the surgical technique and smoothen the learning curve. So we don't try to, you know, teach everything that's there in literature to the delegate, because that would make them more confused. But rather, we stick to one or two basic techniques. And I seldom use any uh, PowerPoint or keynote presentations for my teaching. My teaching is mostly uh, interactive whiteboard teaching. And all the resource material uh, which the candidate can use, 
we provide them in a USB drive, which they can go back and look at it later once they have understood the basic principles of the surgical technique. And then they can expand their knowledge by watching these various videos from different surgeons and looking at different publications on the same subject. So the whiteboard teaching is useful, just like what you what we used to have in school when the class teacher used to write on the blackboard, is that I, I feel that you have greater attention from the delegates versus when you put a PowerPoint slide with a lot of videos and clinical photographs. A lot of times what you are trying to explain to them verbally, at that point of time, they are more busy looking at the clinical photograph or the surgical video, that whatever you have conveyed uh, verbally, they can you know overlook it or sometimes they may not be able to correlate or at least the thought process doesn't start because they are more busy looking at the surgical video. Uh, and the surgical principles uh, involved, we try to explain to them using macro models, either using uh, you know various uh, paper or using different uh, thermocol or using a sponge. We try to explain to them what exactly is happening when you do a certain step of the surgery. And we have a lot of interaction. So basically, we try to extract the information from each and every delegate. So we know that that they what what they have understood is the right concept. So we we do the teaching, then we try to then to explain them back to us, and that sometimes helps us, uh, you know, iron out if they have uh, misunderstood uh, anything that I have been trying to convey. The surgical technique is deconstructed. So sometimes when at the beginning of the course, when I ask the people, you know. Uh, how difficult is this surgical technique? Usually the response is, oh, no, no, it's a very complicated procedure. But we break down the procedure into individual steps and we take them through it. And at the end of it, I think uh, the, 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 the patients, uh, the candidates uh, overview on the surgical technique is, yes, I think I can do this uh, easily. And it shouldn't be as difficult as what I thought when I started the course. So we talk a lot, a lot about the pre-op evaluation and the case selection. What are the cases that they should begin with? What are the kind of instrumentation they should use? What kind of surgical techniques they should employ? Because every time they attend a different meeting, they watch an expert uh, present their most uh, beautiful surgery. So they, they feel that, you know, oh, this looks really good. And But every surgical technique has a learning curve. So we try to tell them that you have to, you know, learn one surgical technique, learn the principle behind it. And once you have got the hang of the technique, you can always expand, you can... Uh, look at other surgical techniques and see what works best in your hands. It's also very important to uh, discuss about the complications that can occur because a lot of the time these complications are the, uh, you know, these are the, uh, they are the uh, basically hurdles which they have to overcome. Otherwise, they start off doing the initial cases and if they have complications, they convert to a PKP. That's the easy way out. So often they don't uh, continue with that surgical technique. And we also tell them to document by the clinical photographs or surgical videos because these are helpful because when we, these are reviewed, we can always go back and see what, where they went wrong and what can be done to prevent a similar uh, problem in the next days. So the course, we concentrated a lot on uh, wet lab training. And this is usually uh, performed after we have done that basic theory of fight board teaching. Then they have to examine clinical cases in the outpatient department, both pre-op and post-op. They observe the life surgery. So they have a basic understanding of what I have been trying to convey. And then once they have armed with this knowledge, they usually practice on donor corneas mounted on artificial anterior chamber. And we usually have one-to-one -one interaction either between the instructor and the candidate or with every uh, microscope, we pair two people so they kind of interact with each other. So they help each other out when one is performing and the other one is observing. And that really helps because they try, there they realize that they are missing out something. And then and that is the point where I step in and I try to uh, sort out the problem. They learn both about donor preparation and the various surgical steps that are required for lamellar cavity. Once we have completed the course, the course doesn't end over there. We have a group on uh, WhatsApp, a lamellar corneal surgery group. And all the people who have attended the course since 2008 are part of this group. And we have on a day-to-day -day basis where people keep sharing their clinical cases, surgical videos, including me. Whatever surgeries I do, if I have a complication, I do share them and I show them uh, why it happened, what, how did I manage it, what was the outcome. And for all the people in this group, they get a 24-7 support from my side for any of their doubts, any complications that can happen, any advice that they need, either pre-op or post-op. I think that's, again, a, a big support for people, and they always uh, appreciate this uh, continued support that I provide. And uh, just to show some of the photographs uh, from the course, I usually take only about 
10 candidates at the time, being as a single instructor with my colleague, Dr. Indumati, and sometimes from the fellows that I have, uh, we, we are able to handle a maximum of just about 10 candidates per course. We do that every quarterly, but we ensure that each person who attends the course uh, is able to successfully perform a lamellar keratoplasty within weeks of finishing the course, and they have done it over the years. I'm very proud of all the people who have done that, and I think all of them have excellent surgical hands, and in this present time, with the kind of training that they receive and the kind of uh, clinical cases that they see at, uh, in most of the teaching hospitals, I think they're already uh, quite uh, enthusiastic and they adapt these new techniques pretty well. Uh, with this, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your patient here. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that, was, that was very enlightening and uh, we are all very inspired. And now we feel that, you know, we, we, must, we must come to you. Uh, to learn and uh, polish our skills. Uh, Dr. Himanshu Matalia, sir, uh, you yourself uh, have a lot of experience in uh, teaching fellows uh, corneal surgery, sir. What's your take and what has your experience been? Uh, I, I must say that uh, very few fortunate people get to learn from uh, Dr. Rajesh Fogla. Um, it's, it's not about uh, the way of teaching or something, but it's about the smaller, finer nuances uh, which he would tell you and I'll, I'll give you one example a lot of time what happens like we we have one tendency to be different from somebody so when we started uh, so in fact he was the one who hooked us all on lamellar keratoplasty when he was in Shankanetrala, he had Mark he called Mark Terry and all of us from across India we went there and uh, we we heard there we got wet lab and there was something which was like totally mind-blowing experience and then we all started uh, doing surgeries and then he came out with uh, cannula. I mean, I, I told him last time also. So he came out with uh, uh, with dal cannula. And you know what, this is what how typically we all surgeons like to do. I'm different and I, I'm quite happy with whatever I do and all those things. And I, I, I fortunately suffered from the same uh, mentality. And I, I never tried out and I used to use uh, 30 gauge needle. 26 gauge needle and once I tried uh, uh, a dal cannula and I was so happy and I was so embarrassed that because uh, just because I didn't want to follow somebody's advice I wanted to be different so whether from troca to the cannula and everything uh, so he has uh, such a keen eye on finer details and believe me those small small things small tips of his uh, can go really long way so I, I i must say that whoever gets chance to learn from him do not lose it i'm not sure the thing is most people will have their own comfort zone uh, of which surgical technique they would like to follow so what i tell people is that it's not necessary what works the best in my hands should work in your hands as well but at least i give you a starting point of what to do and what not to do now, as you go, go along, you can observe other techniques and you can pick up points from that and see how it works. So all the people who are trained with me are not necessarily following exactly what, what I'm doing. When I watch some of their videos, I can see that, that some of them have adapted different techniques or different way of doing it. And it's perfectly fine as long as you understand what you're doing and you're able to do it in a right way. So for me, I have taken out my difficulties in the learning curve and I've tried to give you the basic end product which I have learned by making mistakes. I don't want you to repeat those same mistakes in your learning curve. But that, that doesn't mean that my techniques are the most perfect or nothing like that. I think these are starting points and there are just, enough number of uh, brilliant say, surgeons. I, I just wanted to say that as surgeons, uh, it's very typically it happens that we would like to be different from others. And especially when somebody else has done, I would like to do it differently just to be different. I mean, I think we should come out of that kind of mentality. It's okay to follow somebody if somebody has found out something interesting and it's okay to say well you know i learned from you it's okay to say i don't know something so all the surgeons especially budding surgeons uh, please remember uh, there's nothing wrong in learning from somebody else uh, at whatever age you uh, may be in fact not just rajesh even vikas is here vikas is one of the best uh, teachers when it comes to uh, simplifying things in a way where, I mean, you cannot even imagine to the level. So I, I, I really feel that there are, uh, uh, all of you are like so fortunate to have such kind of wonderful uh, people around you uh, who can teach you anything on the, under the sun. Because can uh, Manshu, the Manshu, points, I, yeah. ju I just want to add that the See, conference that you are talking about where Mark Terry had come, that conference was the reason that I actually got into Karnia. And thanks to Rajesh Fogla and, and even 
it was only because of him i started doing dmac and we had a good discussion so it is definitely right that he always nudges you and um, you know inspires you to uh, do more i think that conference changed the indian ophthalmology i would say uh, exactly on your society whatever uh, we all were like i mean it was like i think the best ever meeting i ever attended in my life i would say uh, rajesh i have a question for you um you yes, know Uh, you know you're a dear friend and i've always always by the finesse with which you do all your surgeries and you know that goes without saying i think uh, you must have heard that from so many of us but uh, what i wanted to ask you was how are you able to inspire so many non cornea surgeons to you know i see them all attending your course and then going back and you know actually doing glomerular surgeries you know those who don't some of them who don't have formal training in cornea or are not doing regular keratoplasties or maybe just refractive surgeons or part time you know like anti segment surgeons who are doing some maybe you know uh, anti segment work uh they end up uh, you know getting trained so well and uh, going back so like how does it go for them i just wanted your uh, you know feedback on, on that please. i think it's basically de- deconstructing the surgery you know making it look simpler to perform i still remember i was in kuwait i was uh, teaching there and i was doing uh, dmac and they had obtained this patient ready dmac donor tissue where the de- decimates donor is already prepared stamped and preloaded so i was doing a case of uh, fukes i did the cataract surgery and then then i took this uh, you know tissue and i attached it to the syringe and i flushed the donor into the eye tapped the cornea put an air bubble and done so the phaco surgeon was who had come from the adjacent theater the first thing he said this is so simple even i can do it maybe i should get this tissue and do it so i think it, it's it's a question of you know making people believe in the in the surgical technique simplifying it and you know i, I the same thing if i had done in a very complicated manner i'm pretty sure the guy would have said no i am never going to attend that so i think uh, that's true for any surgery if you you should always try to if you understand the basic sur- surgical principles behind it i think doing doing a surgery if you have good surgical hands it is not 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 too difficult 